Hey, Gloriana, how you doing? All right, thank you for submitting your first iteration for Fire and Ice. Let's go ahead and jump right over to your composition. Okay, so here we go. Now I've got this here and I wanna bring this up so we can kind of see both in the window and that looks pretty good right there. So I wanna move that out of the way. Let's get that out of the way. Okay. So basically what we have here is, is we've got your fire and ice. And I think your fire and ice is, for the most part, I think is looking really good. Um, good craft. One of the things I'm noticing here, just, let me just bring this down a little bit. What I'm trying to do here, Gloriana, is I'm trying to get a look at this. And then this is current. I, I did this in, in um, uh, uh, digitally, and I current this to what I consider to be actually perfect kerning and perfect letter spacing. And the reason that we spend so much time on letter spacing and word spacing and kerning and tracking, um, as well as, as letting, it is that it, our minds, the human mind automatically wants to organize things. So when we see things that are in groups, our mind says, okay, those are related. If we see things that are not in groups, our mind tries to make organization about, uh, of what we see. And in, in letter spacing, what our mind does is our mind makes these groups. So we're able to take a look at sections of type um, in, in an individual word, we, we are able to look at the word. So, so the banana assignment, the, uh, the uh, objective here is to be able to space the letters in such a way that allows us to perceive the word as one word as opposed to a series of letters. And that makes for expeditious reading. It makes for expeditious organization. We take that theory and we kind of extrapolate it out a little bit and we apply it to phrases, sentences, and paragraphs with the same intent so that things are organized in logical groups. Our mind is able to group these things together and process, process them as groups as opposed to individual elements. And I think it's easy to see the benefit there in that trying to process individual elements takes much, much longer. So the idea here in Fire and Ice is for us to be able to present this word in a way that uh, uh, allows the viewer to be able to view this as one term, one idea, one thought, so to speak. And with ample spacing, we are able to do that. Then mine picks up on this, it automatically registers as fire and ice. Okay, now suppose we have a situation, and I'll use the same example I used last week. Suppose we have an, a situation where now, remember in banana, we would say, okay, if everything is grouped, but there's one space that's too wide, that's where the mind stops. The, the eye senses that one break that's too wide and the mind shuts down right there and automatically tries to make sense of why that is inconsistent. So again, in one word, letter spacing allows us to perceive the word as one word as, as opposed to a, a series of letters. And the same thing here, it's just that we're perceiving these words and this phrase as one group as opposed to a series of words. And within those words, we want to perceive those words as one word as opposed to a series of letters. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look. Now, I think the one thing I'm seeing here, the first thing I'm seeing is a little bit of a distortion right here. Um, this does not seem to be a true vertical. And I think possibly the reason why, I don't know if you photographed this with your phone or scanned it. Um, if you have access, access to a scanner, you eliminate any kind of distortions based on the angle that you're holding your phone when you shoot this. So if you have access to a scanner, by all means, please use it. Um, if you don't, make sure that phone with your phone camera or whatever camera you're using is really above. So place the piece on a desk and just make sure that that is perfectly level above it when you shoot it. That should prevent any distortions. Um, I'm assuming that the distortions are based on the way that the camera was held and because I'm, I'm, I'm but if not, make sure that you're trying to, to um, achieve true uh, verticals here. Generally, the craft is fantastic. I think the, the rendering of the letter forms is beautiful. You've got these wonderful variable um, stroke widths um, right here, the E's, you can see the right, the stress on that E. It's kind of diagonal. And so we can see that right here, we're not really seeing that same stress. This is really thin through here and it gets much thicker as we get through the, um, the bowl area of, of the letter. So you definitely want to, to shoot for that. Um, 
take a look at your 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 mean line. So the mean line itself is the, the, the apex of the lowercase e sits above the mean line, as we can see right there. There's the mean line. See how it sits above just a second. Same thing with the r. So I think your mean line is placed a little too high. Now, don't forget, we also have overshoot. Remember overshoot from our week two presentation. So you definitely want to show overshoot on the curved letter forms. Okay, top both baseline and mean line. Definitely want to show that overshoot. We can see it here, here, here on all the curved letter forms. The curved part sits just above the mean line and just below the baseline. And again, that's to, to circumvent any optical illusions, which may uh, force curved letter forms to appear smaller than their um, uh, counterparts. Uh, that don't have curved letter forms. And so again, that's called overshoot, and that's in week two optical relationships lecture. So you want to definitely take a look at that. I mean, actually, it's right here in this presentation, right here. And if we go back, this is uh, this is overshoot right here. So be sure. And then if you click that I button right there, it'll describe those optical relationships. Okay, now as far as spacing goes, I want to get this back up here. And again, I think this is a perfect spacing. And again, I you know I cheated because I used the computer, but I just want to make sure that you guys understand by way of example uh, with this visual aid. All right, let's, so again, first thing I notice is the true verticals, right? Uh, next thing we see is the overshoot. Look how much bigger the A is than the N. And again, that has to do with overshoot, right? Okay, watch those apexes of the lowercase letters. They extend beyond the mean line. Um, as far as spacing goes itself, I think you're, you're set up pretty well. There's a couple of areas, I think. Right now, the, as far as word spacing goes, this space right here is a little wider than this space here. So what does that do? And let's just concentrate on this. It forces the mind, as I said, remember we talked about making groups. This forces the mind to group these two together. Why? Because they're closer together than these two. Therefore, as I said, the mind automatically tries to organize things by making groups. Therefore, this little bit of a wider space right here forces the mind to read this as fire and ice, as opposed to fire and ice, as it is meant to be read. Okay, does that make sense? That's a critical point. These are called saccadic leaps um, or saccadic jumps, and we are trying to eliminate the number of saccadic jumps associated with any composition by um, expeditiously spacing our typography. Okay, so again, so I think that space right there is a little too wide, or that space is a little too narrow, either one or the other, but adjust those out so that they appear to have the same volume. Individual letter spacing looks pretty good. I think fire is a little bit wide. We can close that down considerably. Okay, and is pretty well spaced, except this space right here is really super close. A much it, it seems to be less space right there than there that volume here than there is here. Um, ice, I think, is per current perfectly, as we can see in comparison here. If anything, I think that this C is a little too close to the to the E, uh, or I should say the E is a little too close to the C. So a little bit of open kerning there. Let so an adjustment, open kerning here, here, and then close it down here, here, and here. Watch your overshoot. Watch your apexes. Watch your uh, consistency in size. Um, you got the apex down really nicely for that, the uh, ascender for the lowercase d, so that's fantastic. Um, other than that, just little tiny little consistencies in mostly in the variable stroke width, as we can see right here. Really super thin right there and much thicker right there. So you're showing that, but I'm, and not to the degree that it really is present in the uh, in the typeface itself. So um, really fantastic start, but go ahead and apply those uh, comments to your final iteration, and I think it, you'll be fine. If you have any any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to let me know. Um, study your, your mean line placement too. Right now, I think your mean line, of course, it's it's a little too high as we saw. So I'm comparing those apex of the lowercase letters as well as overshoot of the curved lowercase letter forms. All right, great job. Any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you very much.